Hey everybody, I just want to quickly go over the last four aspects of daily life in the Roman Empire. So today we're going to focus on housing, education, recreation, and country life. All right, so let's start with housing. For housing, the rich Romans, the patricians, had large houses made of stone and marble. There, because they were made of stone and marble, they had very thick walls to keep out the noise and the dirt from the city. Rich, rich Romans also had um, had um, their homes had indoor pools, kitchens, fancy dining rooms. Um, the reason they had fancy dining rooms is because ancient Romans, the wealthy, the patricians, loved to host dining parties with uh, their family and their friends and other wealthy uh, people in Rome and throughout the empire. So they had these fancy dining rooms. The poor Romans lived in small, cramped apartments made of wood. There was no kitchen in these apartments. They cooked on small grills. The only problem was um, that these small grills would catch the apartment on fire since it's made of wood. Um, and we'll talk, I'll talk about one of the results of that in a moment. And these apartments were noisy, dirty, and filled with disease. So for all Romans, I, I told you you could leave this one blank, but for all Romans, fire was a danger. Again, because the poor Romans, their homes, were their apartments were made of wood. Um, if one caught on fire, it would catch most of the city on fire. Um, and that happened in 64 CE when a fire broke out and burned down much of the city of Rome. Um, so... This is what uh, an example, a diagram of a wealthy Roman home. You have an atrium in the middle with an indoor pool. You have a garden area, a kitchen, a dining room. You know, you have upstairs, uh, uh, bedrooms upstairs and, uh, and around the home, a study uh, because education was important to wealthy Romans. So these kitchens are, are much, uh, are not these kitchens, but these homes are very fancy and have a lot of the aspects that we still see today in our homes. Maybe not an indoor pool, but. And so here's a, a painting of a Roman dining room. Uh, you can see the walls are uh, filled with art and there are sculptures. They're actually eating on um lounges couches they're eating fancy meals and you have um slaves playing music or doing some sort of entertainment okay the poor romans on the other hand um, these are the types of apartments made of wood uh, if you could see inside they're very small cramped dirty um you know, wastewater just being thrown into the streets. Uh, you know, a lot of people in one apartment. So a, a very significant difference from what we see with the wealthy Romans. And so let's move to education where we see another difference as well. We continue to see differences. So rich Romans were tutored by fathers and slaves and then sent to school. Uh, oftentimes, the slaves would be Greeks. Once they captured uh, the civilization of Greece, the, the land of Greece, um, they brought back some of their educated men as slaves, and they would help teach the children. The children of the wealthy learned Latin, which was the language of the Romans, Greek, math, science, literature, music, and public speaking. Um, 
the wealthy might um, also send their children to Athens to learn as well. Okay, you can continue to see the influence of Greece on the Roman Empire and on Romans. Uh, when the, the children went to school, oftentimes the school was actually in the forum. They would learn all these different subjects. They would use wax tablets with a stylus to write. Um, and an interesting thing I wanted to mention is that the teachers had full authority to beat their students if they were not paying attention. So they were very disciplined um, and strict when it came to schooling. Now, poor Romans usually worked rather than go to school. They needed the money. Everybody in the house worked, the men, the women, and um, the children when they got to a certain age. They often learned a trade. Instead of things like Latin and Greek and math and science and literature and music, they focus on a trade, leatherworking, metalworking, farming, things like that, a trade, an actual skill. Um, a labor skill. And for all Romans, boys may have had some education at home. Even the poor may have received some education, even if it wasn't a trade. Uh, most girls didn't. Some did. Some wealthy did. And they would become maybe tutors or real estate agents. Um, but most did not. Most stayed uh, with the household. Because remember, when we talked about women's rights, um, there was not a lot in ancient Rome. So let's talk about recreation. Uh, recreation is what do uh, what did the Romans do in their spare time, their leisure time? And so rich Romans would attend plays and musical performances. They would throw they would throw these fancy dinner parties like we discussed. And they sat on cushions in the shade at the Circus Maximus. And the poor sat on wooden benches at the Circus Maximus. And for all Romans, they went to festivals and public baths. They watched gladiator contests in the Colosseum. And they watched chariot races in the Circus Maximus. So I want to talk a little bit about each of these kind of recreation. But first, you might be thinking, well, how can the poor Romans afford to attend these events? Uh, like the gladiator games at the Colosseum. Well, uh, emperors at the time believed in a policy called bread and circuses, which meant that if they provided the poor with food, bread, and entertainment, circuses, bread and circuses, food and entertainment, that the poor would be happy and not rebel against the emperor or not try to revolt. Okay, so that's how they could so most of the time, these events were free to all Romans. So let's talk about a little bit about each of them. So here's a public bath that was in Rome. Uh, the public bath would be the first purpose of a public bath is what it is today, right? To be clean, to clean yourself. Um, because um, especially for the poor, a, 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 a proper bathroom would not be common, a, pro a proper bath. So um, these public baths, they were a place to, to clean yourself, but they were also a place to socialize, to meet with friends, to um, maybe eat a meal at, um, at the, the public bath. Some public baths had gardens and libraries around it as well. Men and women uh, usually had separate times for bath, uh, for, to, 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 for the public bath to be open to them. Most of the time, women were during the day when the men would be at work. Um, the largest public bath in Rome was built in 306 AD. And this public bath could fit 3,000 people. And it was 
a little over 30 acres um, long. So that's a public bath, one source of recreation. Another source is a Circus Maximus, Maximus, and it's a racetrack uh, for chariot races. And so, um, again, it's just another form of, uh, of education, not education, recreation, these chariot races. And so this is the, re the remains of the Circus Maximus today. And the last one is the Colosseum, right? At the Colosseum, uh, again, both the, the rich and the poor would attend, and usually it would be free or just a small, um, uh, a small fee. Uh, that was for the public bath, the Circus Maximus, and the Colosseum. Um, at the Colosseum, you would see things like gladiator contests, where gladiators, who were most of the time slaves, would fight to the death either against one another or against exotic animals, wild animals. Um, they would have public executions in the Colosseum for everyone to watch. Um, they would have parades. They would bring in exotic animals from other countries in the empire. They would even have mock naval battles where they would fill the Colosseum up um, a ways with water and they would have fake are mock naval battles as as shows, so the Colosseum was very uh, a very popular attraction for both the wealthy and the poor. And so again, just to show you the difference between the wealthy and the poor, even in the Colosseum, is the best seats in the house went to the wealthy, the senators, important officials. Then we have citizens and soldiers, and then at the way top, or what we call today the nosebleed uh, section, because they're so high up, the women and the slaves. The Circus Maximus um, was not as um, divided, especially with the women. Women and men sat with each other in the Circus Maximus. All right, and the final topic is country life. Um, and there, for the, the rich, they owned farms, livestock, and large villas. So they had large homes. Usually the wealthy would have a home in the city. And then they would have a home in the countryside to just so they were able to leave the city and kind of escape um, from the hustle and the bustle of the city. Uh, during this time in the country, they would hunt, they would read, and they would relax. Okay, it was their escape from the city. For poor Romans that lived in the countryside, many of them worked on the farms of the wealthy. And other poor other poor Romans had their own farms, very small farms, and they lived in huts. Okay. Um, now the interesting thing about Rome is we think about the city of Rome, but actually 90% of the people lived in the country. All right, so 90% 90, 90 of the population, the people, uh, the Romans, lived in the countryside. And farms produced food for Rome and other cities. So these farms produced food for Rome and other cities, as we learned uh, before winter break, uh, Rome had a mild climate, which made farming possible all year long. And the climate was good for grains, such as wheat um, and olives and grapes. Right? They have a lot of olive oil and a lot of wine from these olives and grapes. But wheat was the main crop. So there's a review of the rest of the notes. Now we are going to move on to our review assignment where you are going to create some dialogue uh, between a rich Roman and a poor Roman.